Cardiovascular disease strikes in every nation around the world. From sudden cardiac arrest to the disabling effects of acute coronary syndromes and acute ischemic stroke, cardiovascular disease remains a leading cause of disability and death in many parts of the world. Understanding and activating the systems of care developed by the American Heart Association can help improve survival rates and may even prevent cardiac arrest. You play a pivotal role in providing high quality cardiovascular care. What you do matters. What you learn can save lives. Welcome to the American Heart Association's BLS and ACLS surveys video. We'll be demonstrating the latest life-saving interventions and the skills necessary to successfully manage arrest, peri-arrest, ACS, and stroke patients. Most of the instruction will take place here in the American Heart Association's training lab where we can successfully demonstrate and practice those important skills. You, of course, will have the chance to practice skills in learning stations in your classroom. In this segment of the course, you'll be learning two systematic approaches developed by the American Heart Association for treating patients, the Basic Life Support, or BLS survey, and the Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, or ACLS survey. By adhering to these steps, you can better manage patients. When deciding which survey to use to treat a patient, start with the step we all do automatically. Visually assess if the patient is conscious or unconscious. If the patient is conscious, move to the ACLS survey, which we'll review in a moment. For unconscious patients, you'll use the BLS survey, which has four steps. Step one, check for responsiveness. Tap and shout, are you all right? Then scan the chest for movement. Here you're looking for absent or abnormal breathing. This can be no breathing or only gasping. He's not responding and he doesn't, he's not breathing. Activate the emergency response system and get an AED. If the patient is unresponsive, then move to step two. Activate the emergency response system and get an AED. Step three, circulation. Check the carotid pulse. Do not spend more than 10 seconds checking for a pulse. If you cannot feel a pulse within 10 seconds, start CPR. Immediately give cycles of 30 chest compressions followed by two ventilations. Step four, defibrillation. As soon as possible, attach an AED or defibrillator, and if indicated, deliver a shock. If you've had any training on BLS, you'll notice the sequence of steps has changed. You no longer look, listen, and feel for breathing before delivering two breaths. The ABCD sequence often delayed chest compressions as the healthcare provider tried to open the airway and deliver ventilations. By changing the sequence, and giving chest compressions first, more patients may achieve return of spontaneous circulation or ROSC. However, if you determine that the patient is not breathing normally but has a pulse, bypass chest compressions and support the patient with rescue breathing, delivering one breath every five to six seconds. The critical concepts for high quality BLS are push hard and push fast, allow complete chest recoil after each compression minimize interruptions in chest compressions, switch providers about every two minutes to avoid fatigue, and avoid excessive ventilations. Let's take a look at how the BLS steps come together in an arrest situation. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Sorry it's so early. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, now if you look at the graphs, you'll see that the new programs we've implemented haven't really kicked in yet. A 57-year-old man is experiencing many of the warning signs of acute coronary syndromes, or ACS, with chest discomfort, indigestion, and feeling faint. Daniel, are you okay? You don't look so good. I'm fine. Probably gonna go home early, though. Oh. That is your scenario. Now begin. Sir, are you all right? He's unresponsive and not breathing. Activate the emergency response system and get an AED. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 20, 21, 2, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three. The code four, team is five, on the way. I've six, got the AED. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Attach pads 20, to patients' bare 22, chest. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Plug in pads connector. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Shock needed. One, two, Charging. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. To the patient. Press the flashing button. Shocking now. on three. One, two, three. Shocking. Shock, shock delivered. delivered. One, Begin two, CPR. Three, four, Start with compressions. High-quality BLS is the foundation for saving lives following sudden cardiac arrest. If these steps are performed rapidly and well, the patient's chance of survival increases. The effectiveness of advanced life support measures depends on high-quality BLS. There is a reason that these steps are called life support. When a patient goes into cardiac arrest, one of the common presenting rhythms is ventricular fibrillation, or VF. The heart is quivering, but not effectively pumping blood to vital organs. High-quality chest compressions maintain blood flow to vital organs, especially the heart. Chest compressions are the highest priority in the first minutes of cardiac arrest. One way to measure the effectiveness of chest compression is with coronary perfusion pressure. Coronary perfusion pressure during CPR must reach at least 10 millimeters of mercury to potentially achieve the return of spontaneous circulation or ROSC. As chest compressions begin, it takes several compressions to raise the coronary perfusion pressure to a level adequate to supply blood to the heart. The higher the coronary perfusion pressure during CPR, the better the survival rate for the patient. When healthcare providers interrupt chest compressions, perfusion pressure falls dramatically and remains very low until compressions are restarted. Because coronary perfusion pressure measurements are not readily available during a resuscitation attempt, Healthcare providers can monitor CPR quality with waveform capnography and intraarterial relaxation pressures. We'll discuss the details of waveform capnography later in this course. Specific patients with an end tidal CO2 reading of less than 10 millimeters of mercury may not achieve ROSC. For intraarterial relaxation pressures, a reading of less than 20 millimeters of mercury indicates ineffective compressions. To perform high-quality chest compressions, you should push hard and push fast. Push hard means that you should compress the chest at least two inches and allow complete chest recoil after each compression. If the chest does not completely recoil, coronary perfusion will remain low. Push fast means to deliver at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Scientific studies show that the number of chest compressions delivered is an important direct determinant of ROSC and neurologically intact survival. It can be difficult to maintain such a vigorous pace, which is why the American Heart Association recommends that rescuers switch roles after two minutes or five cycles of 30 compressions and two ventilations. High quality CPR minimizes interruptions in chest compressions, so more chest compressions are delivered, resulting in better perfusion. Studies show that even healthcare providers interrupt compressions far too often and for too long. In some cases, spending 25 to 50% of a code without delivering chest compressions. The circular BLS algorithm emphasizes the two minute period of compressions and ventilations, punctuated by a break of no more than 10 seconds to assess the patient and deliver defibrillation. Another key step in BLS is providing rapid defibrillation if indicated. Although CPR can provide vital oxygen and blood circulation, defibrillation is essential to establishing a normal rhythm in patients with a lethal shockable rhythm. The delivery of an electrical shock from a defibrillator briefly stops all electrical activity in the heart. If the heart is still viable, its normal pacemakers may resume electrical activity that ultimately results in a perfusing rhythm or ROSC. 
Survival rates are highest when rescuers provide CPR immediately and defibrillation for initial shockable rhythm occurs within three to five minutes. For a patient with a shockable rhythm, every minute that ticks by without a shock reduces the chance of survival. Let's review the four steps of the BLS survey. Step one, check responsiveness. Tap and shout and scan the chest for movement. Step two, activate the emergency response system and get an AED. Step three, circulation. Check for a carotid pulse. If you cannot feel a pulse within 10 seconds, support circulation by giving cycles of 30 chest compressions followed by two ventilations. Step four, defibrillation. As soon as possible, connect an AED or defibrillator and if indicated, deliver a shock. The best chance of a patient surviving an episode of cardiac arrest depends on high quality BLS. In some cases, BLS results in ROSC, but sometimes cardiac arrest persists, requiring you to continue with more advanced invasive measures. That's the time to use the ACLS survey. Another time to use the ACLS survey is if a patient is conscious but needing treatment for ACS. You can easily remember the steps of the ACLS survey by thinking A, B, C, D. A stands for airway. For unconscious patients, healthcare providers should maintain a patent airway and consider inserting an advanced airway device. The resuscitation team must ensure proper placement of an advanced airway. If the team chooses an endotracheal tube insertion as the method of airway control, waveform capnography should be used. Conscious patients can often maintain the integrity of their own airway, and healthcare providers need only ensure patency by providing suctioning if needed. B represents breathing. For patients experiencing cardiac arrest, healthcare providers should provide two ventilations with the bag mask after every 30 chest compressions. After inserting an advanced airway, healthcare providers should continue ventilations by providing one breath every six to eight seconds or eight to 10 breaths per minute. If the patient is not in cardiac arrest, healthcare providers should assist ventilation as needed at a rate of one breath every five to six seconds or 10 to 12 breaths per minute. If the patient does not require assisted ventilation, healthcare providers can support the patient by administering oxygen as needed. C involves supporting the patient's circulatory status. Attach ECG leads, obtain intravenous or IV access, or intraosseous or IO access, and give appropriate drugs to manage rhythms. Finally, D stands for differential diagnosis. Search for and treat reversible causes or symptoms by reviewing the H's and T's. Although these steps are listed in progressive order, the resuscitation team often performs them simultaneously. With ACLS, patient care is organized around two minute periods of high quality CPR. When the two minutes have ended, that's the time to quickly assess the patient with a rhythm or pulse check and provide defibrillation if necessary. The pause should also be used to rotate compressors. Preparing as a team for these pauses and choreographing your movements improves patient care. Remember, AHA wants these pauses in CPR to be 10 seconds or less. Let's return to our case in the training lab to watch how providers incorporate the ACLS survey into a scenario where a patient is suffering from persistent VF. The case progresses with the arrival of a team of advanced healthcare providers. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Okay, what have we got? 18, 17, the patient 18, suddenly collapsed during a meeting. We started CPR immediately and we've shocked the patient once, one minute, 48 seconds ago, followed by immediate CPR. One, two, three. We've got the ECG monitor attached now. It's now two minutes from our last shock. Okay, let's analyze this rhythm. Stand back, everyone. Hold chest compressions. Okay, we've got persistent VF. Resuming compressions. One, two. Three. Let's deliver a second shock at 150 joules. Dana, let's establish IV access and be prepared to administer one milligram of epinephrine IV. Charging. Clear the patient. Shocking on three. One, two, three. Shocking. Shock delivered. Resuming compressions. One, two, three. What do we know about the possible causes? First responder said that the patient complained of chest pain before he collapsed. 14, 14, 15, How's his airway? 17, I was getting a chest rise with a bag mask, but now I'm getting significant resistance. Okay, let's go ahead and insert an advanced airway. 
Dana, once that IV is established, give one milligram of epinephrine and flush with a 20 milliliter saline bolus. Okay, one milligram epinephrine with a 20 milliliter saline bolus. And the IV is started, and one milligram epinephrine, and the IV is flushed. Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and prepare 300 milligrams of amiodarone. I'll let you know if and when to give it. Okay, drawing 300 milligrams of amiodarone. The laryngeal tube is in. I've got good bilateral breath sounds. Waveform capnography is reading 20 millimeters of mercury. Okay, great. We're going to continue chest compressions at a rate of at least 100 beats per minute. Let's give one breath every six to eight seconds and avoid excessive ventilation. How long since our last shock? It's almost two minutes. Okay, let's get ready to switch compressors. We're going to stop and analyze. Two minutes. Okay, let's analyze. Okay, we have an organized rhythm with regular complexes. Do we have a pulse? We've got a weak but palpable pulse. Intidal CO2 is now up to 50 millimeters of mercury. Okay, great job everyone. We're gonna start post-cardiac arrest care. I'll need a blood pressure, a set of labs, pulse ox, and let's get a 12 lead ECG. Successful resuscitation following cardiac arrest requires an integrated set of coordinated actions, which are represented by the links in the adult chain of survival. These links include the immediate recognition of cardiac arrest and activation of the emergency response system, early CPR, rapid defibrillation, effective advanced life support, and integrated immediate post-cardiac arrest care. Healthcare providers implement this chain of survival through BLS and ACLS surveys. The BLS survey stresses activation of the emergency response system, early CPR, and rapid defibrillation. The ACLS survey, airway, breathing, circulation, and differential diagnosis integrates advanced techniques such as advanced airways, quantitative waveform capnography, appropriate drug delivery, and the diagnosis and treatment of reversible causes. Successfully following the American Heart Association's systematic approach to assessing and treating patients with the BLS and ACLS surveys can make a difference. What you learn can save lives.